Awesome. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, joining us today. Very excited to be here with you uh, for this business storytelling workshop. Actually, it's not the first time, but this time actually is a bit different because uh, I don't know, maybe you got the email, maybe you didn't, but a while back, uh, I wrote to people that had joined the VNP training or maybe have downloaded one of my guides and so on. And I wanted to know what were your two biggest questions about storytelling and in particular business storytelling, because this is something that over the last couple of years I've been looking more and more into. And it's quite interesting to see how people, what people perceive. And I have to say that the response pretty much had me, <laughs> had me like this, because I see that there's a lot going on there, especially because storytelling can be quite broad and it's extremely useful a tool for anything that has to do with communication. Not only actually, because also you can use it in public speaking, you can use it in marketing, you can use it in branding. And so I see that the storytelling spectrum, it's, it's quite broad. So I'm very happy I, I send this question to, to, to you guys and really thank you very much for your answers. Um, and well, I took some of that and I mix it up with some of the content that I already have. And I put together this workshop today in order to address those points and actually go a bit further um, on how you can use storytelling and how you can actually use it. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much for joining me today and the rest of, of the people who are here. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm super happy that you managed to be here. And pretty much if you are in this workshop, that means that most likely you have attended one of my uh, webinars or meetups or one of the things that I've organized. So it's, it's great to see you again. So thank you very much for joining. Now, this business storytelling workshop, um, how do we get here? Well, over the last couple of years, I've been actually working with entrepreneurs, startup founders, mainly on the stage, helping them master their pitch. Yeah? And with time, I started to see that we needed to look more into storytelling and how can we use storytelling to stand out from the rest, to position ourselves, whether it is in your personal brand or your business or your message in general, because we are bombarded by noise. We're bombarded by people out there wanting to get our attention. So how do we make sure that we're able to stand out from the rest, that we're able to connect, build trust, communicate our message, and above all, get people to take action, right? So over the last six years, I've been focusing on that, and I founded what is called Skills of Life, skillsoflife.net, which is pretty much a communication school. And we're working with entrepreneurs, freelancers and professionals that want to move the world forward, helping you simplify your message so that you can create interest and persuade more people to do business with you. So I definitely encourage you, if you haven't seen that, that I, I have and I'm running skillsoflife.net, I definitely encourage you to go out there. There's a lot of resources when it comes to communication, storytelling, public speaking. There's a lot more and more to come there as we are actually building up our, con our workshop um, booklet right now. So definitely check it out. More stuff to come there if you haven't. But that's what we do. We organize webinars uh, focusing on communication skills. And this workshop today, it's all about business storytelling. So from what I got in the questions when I asked you, what I got in the answers was that there is a big overview and very different expectations around storytelling and in particular business storytelling. So I would like to ask you uh, who you're here in the audience right now, what exactly did you expect from business storytelling? And I know I wrote a description and there is an email and so on, but I know that you have had some experience when it comes to communication and there's something in particular that you're struggling with and hope to actually solve that little issue or overcome that struggle with some of the content that we're going to share here. So I would love to just ask you if you can type it in in the comment section, what exactly do you expect to gain 
from this workshop or what is the most pressing issue that you're struggling with right now, whether it is on your business or in your presentation. So I get a better overview and actually I can adapt the content as we go. So just share it there in the chat. Um, what are you expecting to gain from today? Or um, I mean, something that you're struggling with when it comes to communication and how do you think storytelling can help you with that? So whether you struggle with presentation skills, whether you're struggling to communicate your business, uh, I know that the audience can be quite diverse, especially because for storytelling, we can use it in so many different areas. Now, what is important to mention from my side is that what I'm gonna share with you, I, I, I wanted to, to evaluate it, not from what I'm sharing with you, but how can you use this? Because I'm gonna use different examples and more focus on if you're a small business owner or if you're a freelancer, how can you actually use this content? But let's say that you're a professional working in a company and you're struggling or you, or to, to put together presentations or, or somebody has asked you to deliver a keynote um, in the near future or something like that. It doesn't matter. What I'm gonna share with you are principles that are, have to do with storytelling that you can very easily use according to the setting in which you find yourself. So regardless if it is communicating a product or communicating an idea or trying to build your personal brand, what we're gonna to cover today is gonna to be extremely useful in all those areas, okay? So I'm gonna quickly check the chat and thank you very much already for getting so active. Let's see. So I want to find a personal spin to talk about my company on social media. Okay, hi, <laughs> hi, Andra. Cool. Uh, to better my pitch when presenting my business. Okay. We have a complex and highly technical SaaS product. I want to improve how we can communicate the benefits of our product to our customers. And I think storytelling can help bring across complex messages better. I'm not, I'm just not yet quite sure how. Yeah. Okay. As well as the lean, <laughs> the, the black art of storytelling, uh, how use better approaches and better phrases. By black art, do you mean like uh, persuasion, manipulation, influencing, like all these sales techniques? I'm not sure, okay? Um, what exactly that means. But I have to say that actually you guys are on the right track. So what I'm gonna share with you is gonna help you. Obviously we have, we don't have enough time to talk about everything that has to do with storytelling and how I can really help you like step by step. But I want to make this as useful as possible for you where at the end of this session, you have already an idea of how you can approach things from a different perspective and allows you to get to the next stage, okay? So that you can overcome this, these challenges that you're encountering right now. I mean, we, we don't have, I mean, I deliver hours of, of boot camps and workshops when it comes to storytelling. So we're quite limited on that, but I definitely want to help you get to the next stage. And I think that's already a lot. So keep on sharing on the chat. I will be checking that at every single stage as I come back to it. But, uh, but yeah, quite good stuff there already. And definitely I'm gonna give you stuff that is gonna help you with this, okay? Now, if you see that maybe you can't find a connection with the examples that I'm sharing, feel free to tell me, hey, how about this area? Or how will you do about X, X, uh, X factor or this point over here? I mean, try to bring it over to your side. I mean, take advantage of the fact that we're in a live discussion. And um, this was pretty much a private uh, workshop. I did not share this publicly. I only send this invitation to people that are within my mailing list at one point have signed up for one of my webinars or downloaded one of my guides. And uh, I wanted to answer pretty much all those questions that, that uh, you share a while back when it comes to storytelling. So thank you very much. Cool. All right. So expectations, challenge accepted. Now from my side, there are a couple of things that I, I want to really get across here. Yeah. And if there are three things 
that I, I would like to communicate to you today when it comes to storytelling are the following. If all you take out from today, please make sure there are these three things because these are the fundamentals, yeah? If you go to YouTube and you put business storytelling, you'll find a lot of stuff there, but you're not gonna find the things that I'm gonna share with you right now. And these are the things that are going to allow you to build a foundation that then it's going to make your storytelling successful, okay? So the first thing that we gotta keep in mind is this. Your role defines you, okay? When we talk about storytelling, we need to understand the different elements that are developing a story. And within those elements, we all have different roles. And understanding your role is gonna be fundamental to the way you use storytelling. Because we make a mistake very common that instead of attracting people to us, we are pushing them away with our stories. So the first thing that we're going to address today is actually understanding your role. So we got to look into how storytelling works and then more importantly, how do you use it so that you don't push people away, but instead you attract people to you, okay? The next thing is that storytelling, your story positions you. And so we're gonna look into how to actually use storytelling in order to become different, to be that person that stands out from the rest. And lastly, we're going to look into strategy because it's very easy to... So storytelling can help you in two ways. One is on the tactic side and on the strategy side. And if you don't take storytelling into account when you're developing your strategy, then what's going to, what's going to happen is that your tactics are not going to be aligned with your overall story. And so your message is it's going to get diluted and you're going to confuse your customers or your listeners or your audience, okay? So this is key to, to grasp because these are the three things that I really want to get across today so that next time when you look into storytelling, you're like, okay, am I communicating this story from the right perspective? How is this message positions, how is positioned, how am I positioning myself in the mind of my customer or my audience? And how can I make sure that I'm in the right place? That is the place that you need uh, in order for people to connect with you. And lastly, I, am I drifting away? Is this aligned with my overall strategy or this is actually just a tactic? Is this something that is just going with today's trends and, and way of living or this is actually aligned with my strategy? Because remember, your strategy is aligned with your vision. So you need to be very clear on, on, on the macro level, what your story is, and that fits with your strategy. So very complex things. Uh, this, is, this is definitely not a beginner's thing. Uh, I am assuming that you already have some experience when it comes to the whole topic of storytelling. At least I would expect that either you are delivering presentations already and have struggle on how to communicate or connect with your audience, or and you're trying to define your personal brand, or uh, you're selling a business, you're driving a business and, and you see those confused faces with your customers or there is some traction and you wanna improve on that conversion, right? Uh, but you're struggling to bring everything into one congruent message. So that's what I'm assuming from my side uh, towards, towards you, okay? Cool. So feel free to take notes. Uh, you can have me in the background. My slides don't have that much information. Feel free to make a screenshot as well. Um, and feel free to drop questions as we're going, okay? Um, if you see something that comes up, rather than write it down to ask about it later, just drop it in the chat. And then that way it is there and we can make sure we address it when the time comes. But feel free to, you know, open a notepad or something out there. Now is the time to really write stuff down. Um, yeah, you, 
I will send you the recording, but uh, how often do you go through those recordings, especially if you took the time to participate today? So make the most out of this experience. Uh, write down, you know, if something comes, comes to your mind, make sure to write it down. And if you have any questions, just dump them directly in there as we go along, okay? Just take advantage that we have this real-time conversation. This is not a recorded webinar, okay? All right, guys, perfect. Let's go ahead and get started. So what do I mean that your role defines you? Well, before we get there, we need to look into what exactly is storytelling, okay? And we need to set the base. We need to set the foundation. So I would love to ask you, what exactly is storytelling? So many times we see in the movies, okay, they're gathering around a bonfire and they're ready to tell night stories and horror stories. And how is that related to what the storytelling that about, how is that related to the storytelling that we're discussing today? So I would like to ask you, what did you understand exactly by storytelling? What do you think it is? when somebody talks about storytelling and go ahead and share it in the chat just some keywords maybe you don't have to type the whole thing but share it there so i know where are we and actually how can we get exactly to where we need to be because one of the things when i started uh, looking into storytelling i mean all i knew was about you know the stories that i was told when i was a kid and the stories that i know in in literature and Shakespeare and so on and plays and these are the stories that I know uh, and from there I understood okay that movies are telling stories and so on but as I got more and more into it I needed to find a way to define it because how can I actually implement this into my business right so let's see we got storytelling is communication which uses the imagination of the listener to draw them into what is being communicated. Nice. That's actually quite a quite a good description. Uh, it's a bit more advanced than what I'm looking for, but definitely that's that's very good description. Let's see storytelling, past, present, future. Definitely. Um, and you're getting ahead of ourselves, actually, Benjamin, because these are elements of a story. Um, and not exactly past, present, future, but the structure that you're describing there, splitting three times, yeah? Um, we got persuasion without wanting to persuade, creating inspiration. Uh, definitely, I mean, we're bringing that in there. Um, but if we're using a narrative to connect your brand to customers, okay, Anna, well, actually as well, we're getting a bit of a herd of ourselves because that's, that's actually going to be my next question. But if we look into storytelling, if we need to define storytelling, let's start with this, okay? Storytelling is sharing ideas through stories, okay? And this has to relate to the concept of ideas in a very abstract way. But we have been using storytelling for thousands of years, since the beginning of civilization, in order to pass information from one generation to another, from one person to another. Something that we have learned, we understand that learning, we put it into an idea and we share it. And so we figure out throughout time that when we put together those ideas in the forms of stories, we increase the chances to succeed that that story is remembered, it's memorable, and therefore the other person really understands what we are trying to communicate, okay? So what we do is that we put together some, some story, and within the story, actually, we have an idea that we want to communicate. So the goal is actually to pass an idea, a message, something that we have learned, some kind of lesson. So let's, let's put that in the broad concept of an idea, and then communicate that to, our, to a person, a customer, an audience. And we use a story because it allows us to be memorable and, and increases the chances that that person not only understands what we're communicating, but also remembers what we're telling them. And, and the reason why it allows them to remember is because the story forces us to simplify the message and it allows us to, to take that person in a journey where they can put themselves within the story. And it is through that action that we increase the chances that they 
remember that story, okay? So the narrative, yes, definitely, and connect the brand to customer. So sharing ideas through stories. Now, in the concept of a business, right? What exactly is business storytelling? Well, I have a question for you. What do you feel or understand or, or see when you see this logo? Even, I know I'm sure that I can put just the color red and you automatically may associate it with this company. What do you see when you see this logo? Dinners with my dad when I was a kid. Diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're not far away. I mean, we're supposed to have like six spoons of sugar a day and half a liter of this has 13. So uh, definitely. Let's see, Santa Claus. Well, that's not far away because the picture, the image that we know today of Santa was invented by Coca-Cola. So there is a reason why Santa is red. Let's see, I was raised by hippies. <laughs> Christmas advertising, there, well, that's the connection with the red. There is a, re a reason why Christmas is red. Coca-Cola invented the figure that we know of Santa Claus. So you see automatically, I just put this logo out there and we see all the information that we get, right? That means that they have managed to communicate an idea, to communicate an experience through their story, right? And they do it in a way very particular. Because it's not that they tell you, hey, we have this dark, sugary, bubbly, sweet drink that you're going to enjoy. No, no, no. Instead, they tell you stories, stories that put you in the center, right? And so it is you sharing with friends. It is you, you having an experience with somebody. It's you in good times. And so actually, I think at some point they were trying, they were pushing the message of, of happiness. Yeah. Coca-Cola in the end means happiness. So you see how they're trying to build the story and position themselves in the area of happiness very far away. But the idea is to connect that when you have a good time, you feel like enjoying Coke. That you just by enjoying Coke or drinking a Coke, you automatically are going to have a good time. So there's a lot of psychology that is coming there. I mean, they need to position themselves within your mental triggers. There's a very good book that you can look into called Hooked. And it has to do mainly how social media companies are able to, to create triggers within you. Like how is it possible that suddenly you feel like using Instagram to take a picture or, or in a moment you, you feel like using Instagram to capture that, that, that picture is the same way that suddenly you feel like a beer, suddenly you feel like drinking Coke, you feel like McDonald's and so on. Like, but the whole idea is that they use storytelling to position you in the center of the story so that when you're having these experiences, you're able to connect with their product and their brand. And so what are they doing really is that they are bringing a personal story to their business to make it persuasive. And so if you need to define business storytelling, we know that storytelling is communicating ideas through stories, ideas through stories. Now you bring a personal story to a business to make it persuasive. So when you see that, you have all those personal stories that you connect with, with your experience. Obviously, Coca-Cola has the legacy. I mean, they have been in business for 100 years. So there are a lot of people that will connect with the brand. But it's estimated that you need about $100 million in order for somebody to just simply recognize your logo and already connect and have an experience with it. But so business storytelling has to do with attaching a personal story to a business to make it persuasive. In today's world, we want to have that personal relationship with the company. We want to have that personal face with the brand. Yeah? And so that we get to see who are the people behind it, how can we actually work with them? We don't want to have that relationship with a person, with a faceless corporation that is just bombarding us with messages. But now we want to have that one-on-one -on -one communication thanks to the internet. We're able to have a conversation. And now with live video, I mean, and, and, and social media, we're able to have that in real time, right? So attaching a personal story to a business to make it persuasive. Storytelling B2B versus storytelling B2C. How is it different? 
it's not. And so and, and we're, we're going to see soon very well. So before we get into, let's look actually into what exactly is a story, because many times people ask, well, what makes a story great? And, and, and how do I put a story together? So in order for something to be a story, it needs to have these five elements. If you don't have these five elements, it's not a story, okay? You can't have a great story without having these five elements. In order for something to already be a great story, well, it, at least you need to, a good starting point is to have these five elements, okay? If you don't have them, it's not a story. If your mission statement, chances are is that your mission statement, it's not a story, okay? And I want to address this because storytelling is becoming a buzzword and many people are like, well, I need a story to put here or what's your story or the story here and there. So for something to be a story, it needs to have these five elements. You need to have a plot. You need to have a theme. You need to have a setting. You need to have characters. You need to have a conflict, otherwise known as the problem. Okay, and so when I ask you what is storytelling, you actually mentioned some of the elements that are within these five, or you mentioned, or this, yeah, you mentioned some of the five elements, but not maybe not all of them, but you mentioned some of them and so on. Yeah, some of the the parts within them. So, what exactly is the plot? The plot is a series of stories through which the characters go through in order to solve the problem. Okay, so it could be a quest, it could be funny, tragedy. I mean, you have them there. You could have from rich to poor. You have a, like Avengers, Thanos, you know, uh, overcoming the monster voyage and return. Uh, this could be the Lord of the Rings, yeah, you know, going there and coming back. Or uh, Rebirth, where actually Matrix, where he needed to die at the end and then, and then come back as the actual chosen one, if you manage to understand Matrix when, when, when it came out. Or comedy, um, or I don't know, tragedy, Romeo and Juliet. Like, so the, the plot is actually the series of, of, of actions that are happening around, like within the story, okay? What is the main, the main concept? Next, we have the theme. And the theme relates to, to the central idea that wants to be communicated, or maybe it's just a moral lesson that, that you wanna pass to somebody else, okay? But what is the main thing that you want people to get at the end of the story, yeah? That's going to be the theme. What is, what is the main message, right? Then we have the setting. So every story needs to happen in two, in, two, in two areas. One is place. So this is location, let's say Vienna uh, 2020, uh, Istanbul in the year 1000, USA, I don't know, 1950. Um, but every, every story needs to have a time and a place because we need to make sure that we are able to know and visualize them in our head as you share it with us. And then we need, we need to have characters. Every story has a character. And in particular, two key roles. We're gonna have a protagonist, which is also known as the hero, and we're gonna have an antagonist, which is the villain. Now the antagonist, which is the opposite to the protagonist, so it's the villain that is opposite to the hero, is actually going to be the root of the conflict, the root of the problem. Now, at least the external problem, okay? The external problem is gonna be generated by the villain because the conflict is the most important element of every story, all right? And so it's so important that we actually have two main problems happening within a story in general. On the one side, we have the internal conflict and this is the challenges that the hero has in, internally, okay? So this is what the hero needs to fight internally, whether it is, do I have what it takes or do I, do I know, I, I, can I do this? These are the internal doubts that the hero has. And then externally, this is, this is gonna express either me against uh, somebody else, uh, me against a group, me against nature, me against technology, 
okay? So we're always gonna have the conflict split and you're gonna have an internal side and then an external side. So all this is gonna be a story. You need to have these five elements. And one thing that you could do as an exercise is that when you put together a story um, or when you look into your communication, you can ask yourself, am I covering these five elements? Are they there in the story? Now, this is not enough to know. This is just one side of the story because it's enough to know that you have the five elements, but on the other side, you don't just put them all together. Okay, and that was one of the things that was uh, in the in the answers to the questions back when I sent that email. Is that what what is the algorithm? How how do I put them together? How do I put the story together? So now you know the five elements that you need to bring in in order to make it a story. Now we need to look into how do you combine them because the way you combine them is also relevant. And this is what is called the art of the story. Okay. Every story is split in beginning, middle, and end. You could say the past, present, and future um, because, well, the beginning is already in the past, then the middle is what's happening, and then into the future is where we're going. But in any case, every story is split in three. You have act one, which is the beginning, act two, which is the middle, and act three, which is the end. And, and, and this is important to know because once you understand how this works, it allows you to then harvest different elements that are around you to quickly put stories together that you can use to present to your customers, okay? And then I'll show you where to sort them later. But in the beginning, act one, we have the exposition. And here we have the introduction of two things. We have the setting. So we're gonna see where is the story taking place, whether in time or in location. And we're gonna have the introduction of the characters. Who are the people who are gonna be part of this? We're gonna see into what kind of person do they are, are, are they? What is the relationship that they have between them? Um, where, where do they live? Like what is important to them? And so on and so on. The end of the beginning, the end of act one is marked by something. What do you think that is? Let's see if you're still listening. What do you think is happening at the end of act one that introduces and moves the whole story into act two the conflict yes the problem so the problem is introduced act two starts and then we see that little by little there's a series of actions that are happening that are creating more and more tension right all the way on to finally the problem is solved that's called the climax because now the stress is released and that marks the beginning of act three, the end of act two. Now we go into the following action where we get to see how is life now after the problem is solved and how it's going to be from there on. Every story follows this process. There's a beginning, suddenly, boom, conflict happens. Then there's more stress and more tension. And then finally, we get to the resolution and then we see how we move on from there on. Does that make sense? Just like life itself. Yes. And actually, uh, now that you see this, then you can look. So when you, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's fine because I don't really have that here. But let's say that you wanna communicate a particular idea, right? Well, then you're gonna look into the story of how do, how do you come up with that idea, right? And so you're gonna look back, back and see what was going on in your life. Where were you? What were the characters? What's happening? Suddenly something happened that challenged your status quo or changed, uh, altered the state of peace. And so now you're trying to solve this problem and things got more complicated until finally, ha, ah, you come to a realization, you solve the problem, and that's why I should buy your product, right? That's how you're able to get to the next stage. So I'm getting ahead of myself, but yes, very good, life itself. So obviously I mentioned here the exposition and we have some characters and we have the main character who is the protagonist of the story. And in order to be able to put stories together, we really need to understand our hero because the hero is the one taking action, right? And so we're telling stories 
We need to know how the hero behaves. And actually, heroes behave in a very clear pattern. And we know that because Joseph Campbell, when he wrote the book, Hero with a Thousand Faces, he actually analyzed stories throughout time and managed to find a pattern between all of them. And it was actually that the hero follows a very clear path in every story. And it goes something like this. The hero is at home, living at peace, enjoying life. Suddenly, something happens, the conflict, that changes the status quo. Yeah, it alters that peace. The hero no longer is at peace. So the hero is looking around, trying to decide if I should solve this problem. Should I go into this unknown world? I've never been there because I never had this problem before. And so he's talking around and asking and looking until he meets the mentor. The mentor is the one that shows the hero that the hero actually not only must get out there and solve the problem, but that also that it is okay. They have what it takes. And in the worst case, the hero will be there to support them because once the hero had to also solve a very similar problem. So the man, the, 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 sorry, the mentor, right? The mentor once had to solve a very similar problem. So automatically the, he, the mentor empathetically connects with the hero. The hero feels understood and says, yeah, actually, well, you know, this person was there. They understand me. They see me that I have what it takes because they were there. All right, let's go ahead and try to solve this. And so the hero now ventures into the unknown world, crosses the threshold, and it goes on through all these ups and downs, you know, trying to solve it. Do I have what it takes? No. Until finally, there's a revelation. There's a realization. The hero understands finally develop the skills or gets to know somebody or, you know, something changes in their mindset that allows them to see a solution to the problem and therefore allows them to see a solution to solve the, the external problem, the villain. And so because now they believe they have what it takes, they solve the problem and now they can come back home, but they don't come back home as same the per same person. Now home is not the same either. They're not the same. They have a different network. They have different skills. They're in a different position, but nevertheless, they come back to peace. Okay. And they enjoy that peace. That's why, even though in here it's a circle because they're coming back home, home actually it's in a higher place, like in this arc, because home is not the same as it used to be. Okay. Cool. So any questions about this? Great question, Kim, because when it comes to the hero's journey, you know, this particular journey, you are going through this, right? You saw that there was a problem in the world that needed to be solved. And so you venture out there trying to solve this problem. You started your business. Uh, or maybe it's the product that you're selling that you believe in. And so you see that people are struggling or the world is struggling and you see that your product is the solution. So you want to get it in front of as many people as possible. And hopefully you manage to figure out a way to make your business successful. And so you have this realization that would allow you to get there. And finally, everybody's using your product and now you can rest at peace. Right. So you are going through this own journey, both professionally, both personally. Where people make the biggest mistake is in the following, because the whole point of telling the story and remember, attaching a personal story to a business to make it persuasive. The whole point of telling the story is so that the customers find themselves within the story. Right? So the story is not about you. The story is about the customers. So when we are telling the story, the challenge is that if we don't manage to make the customer find themselves within the story, instead of attracting them, we're automatically going to push them away. So how can we make sure that when we use storytelling, we don't push them away and actually they take action? Well, very simple. What we need to do is actually change the role from which we tell the story. 
because when it comes to storytelling, when it comes to business, when it comes to being an expert, when it comes in to, to your business, the whole point why you tell the story so that they find themselves, right? You are not the hero. You are the mentor. Your customer is not looking for another hero. Your customer is looking for a mentor who can guide them. Because just like you have this hero's journey, your customer has this journey as well. You, and, and let's take, for example, this workshop, right? You have a problem that you're trying to solve. I position myself as the mentor through which I help you with this talk, with this workshop, overcome your challenge so that you can move on. You use your products and services to give the tools to your hero so that they can solve the problem so that they can get to where they need to be, right? So this is a consistent process that is happening over and over and over. So it is by telling your story from the position of the mentor that then instead of pushing your customers away because they're not looking for a hero, that you're able to attract them. So how do you tell the story from the mentor side and from the hero side? Well, when you're talking about we, we have the best cost, like we have the best lawyers in town. We have been in business for a hundred years. We do this, we do that, we know so much. You're positioning yourself as a hero. So you need to make the conversation about them. So the whole point is to tell the story, not to show how great you are. And I know it's tricky because you wanna build trust. And in order to build trust, you need those awards and those recognitions because that shows that you're an established company. But the people don't care for that. People just want to feel understood. If you understand what my problem is, if you show me a path, a clear solution that it's non-threatening, that is, it's not risky, but it's, it looks clear to me. And you tell me why, how my life is going to be better by going through that path, problem, solution, impact, then I'm going to be able to see you as a mentor. Okay. So extremely important because the whole point is that your story is just simply a tool for you to persuade your customers to do or think something right the whole point they tell the story is for your customers to see that you understand them that you have been there before and actually that through your products and services you'll be able to help them get to where they need to be your customer is a hero they have a problem that they're trying to solve never make it about you it's all about them so you just need to show them that you understand them and the best way to show them that you understand them is by telling them, how do you know this problem exists, right? How do you know the problem exists? Or some kind of philosophy that you have, right? Something that you believe in that now you're trying to solve and therefore you know that this problem exists and that's why you're trying to help people get rid of that problem. Inter uh, thank you very much. So questions right here before I go a bit deeper into the perspective of your customer, the hero. Yes, uh, that's a very good question. Um, and, and, and I have something at the end, but I can address it right now. So let's see, just like, like I'm gonna recap and share some of the questions that have come across. So is the client the hero or are we the solution provider, the hero, or we are the mentor? So Kim, uh, yeah, I think that's very clear right now. The client is the hero, okay? You are the mentor, yeah? And through your products and services, you help your customer, your hero, overcome that problem, all right? So that they can get to the next stage. So maybe you're not a business owner, maybe uh, you're an employee and you're trying to sell a product, or maybe you have to deliver a presentation. You're still the mentor, the audience is the hero, and through your presentation, you're gonna guide your customer, your audience, to see life in a different way so that they can come and solve their problem, okay? So you tell a story so that you can change their perspective. Because your customer, 
has a mindset, have past experiences that are fixing the way they see the world. So use storytelling, you use your own story to create a different perspective so that they can see life and see your products as the ultimate solution. Just like me, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that people know about storytelling, but they're not clear and they don't see how to use it. So I need to show you that the biggest challenge and the biggest reason why storytelling is not working is because we tell the story from the position of the hero. And so when I tell you and show you that you can tell it from the position of the mentor, that opens a new world of possibilities for you that you wanna to get to the next stage. And how do you get to the next stage? With my bootcamp, yeah? Through my products and services, through my workshops, through my coaching, right? So just like this works in our relationship, this works in your relationship with your customers. This works in, the, in your relationship with, with your audience um, or, or whoever it is that is coming to you because people have a problem that they wanna solve and they're looking for a way to solve it. They're looking for that mentor that is going to guide them. As simple as that. Now, Anna, you ask, what if customers are unaware of the problem? Great question. There are three types of customers, okay? You have the customer who knows he has a problem and knows how to solve it, so they know what they're looking for. You have the customer that knows he has a problem but has no clue how to solve that problem, so they're just looking around. And you have the customer who has no clue they have a problem, so they're not looking for anything. As a startup, as a small business, you have nothing to do with people who don't know they have a problem, right? You don't have the resources to convince them. There's, there's no need. You say, well, the most logical thing would be, hey, why don't you target those that are looking for something? Um, because those that are looking for something are going to be looking around. They will come across you and they will get to you. And those that know how to solve it will, will find you and then they automatically get in and come. So if you spend the time trying to convince those that are not so sure, um, you, you'll get those that know what they're looking for. That's the logical way, but it doesn't really work like that. And, and I'm getting a bit off topic because I don't have that here, but it, 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 I see that it's relevant to what, uh, to what you need, right? Well, there is a, a, the theory of the fusion of innovation developed by Emirate Rogers in 1962. And this is that bell curve that shows how innovations are implemented in the market. And so it shows that every market has a division of five different groups, very distinct, distinct groups. And what it shows is that on the first, on the very left, you have a graph here, a slide that can help me. Oh, you are in luck. Perfect. So it's on, it's on my backup slides, on my extra slides. Good. All right. So it goes like this. The diffusion of innovation developed by Everett Rogers in 1962. And what he identifies that in every market, you have five different groups, right? And so, uh, okay, I thought this was a different animation, but anyway. So every group is, every market is divided in five ways. And on the very left, the 2.5% of that market, we have the innovators. Followed by that, we have the early adopters. Then we have the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards. So what exactly are these different groups? Well, the innovators are the guys who stood up in line for five days to get the first iPhone when it came out, when nobody had seen it, they knew that this was a thing. They were looking for this, they just nobody else offered. They knew they wanted a touch screen phone that looked exactly like the iPhone, and therefore they needed to be the first ones because they knew that that was the future. They didn't care to stand in line and pay what it took to get it. The early adopters are the ones that are not necessarily gonna stand in line for a week, but they go within the first couple of days and they get that iPhone. They see that this is the next thing, but okay, I'm not that crazy about that. The early majority are the ones that maybe, okay, my contract expired or uh, my phone, or maybe I just go six months later when I see that somebody already, some people around me have it and they have good things. So that software have been tested, I go ahead and get it. The late majority would be those guys that, okay, my contract expired. 
uh, and I need to get a new phone, so I just get a new phone. And the laggards are the ones that, you know, they their phones broke. Like it's been six years with the same phone. It doesn't work anymore. It's analog or, you know, like it's really old. So the reason why they get a new iPhone is because they simply cannot keep getting the old phone they had. So two things, we have the three customer segments, right? So the logical thing would be to target those customers that know they have a problem, they're not sure how to look, what to look for. So we target those so that those that know how to solve the problem will come and solve it. The thing is that the early majority, it's not going to buy if the early adopters are not using your product. And the early adopters are not gonna buy if the innovators are not using your product. Because the innovators are the ones who are actually going to tell the story for you. They're the ones who are gonna amplify your message. And that's why Apple, when they launched the phone, they didn't target early adopters. They didn't target the early majority. They didn't want to, they didn't need to. They targeted the innovators. Because when everybody saw those crazy people, those fans going for it, then I started wondering, so in your startup, in your business, it's the same thing. You need to target the innovators. You need to target the customers that know they have a problem and they know what they're looking for. And that thing, it's you, okay? So don't waste time on the others because already if you're able to target those, you already have 2.5% of the market. And it is by targeting those innovators, those that know they have a problem and know that the solution is you that are gonna amplify and allow you to then get to the rest of the market. Okay, so I sidetrack a bit uh, and uh, I'm gonna come back to this. So we came to the customer perspective. All right, so from the customer side, uh, just to go a bit, uh, give you a better overview. And I, let's see, wow. Okay, I'm not tracking time. So I'm really deep into this right now. But I give you a, a, an overview of the customer. So from the customer side, I have a problem that I'm trying to solve and then they meet a mentor, you, who gives them a plan, right? Who then pushes them to act so that they go through the threshold and we show them how that action is gonna result in them avoiding tragedy and achieving success, all right? And this is important to mention because on the one side, you know how life looks when the problem is gone. The customer doesn't know. And so most of the time we tell them, this is a problem and this is how you solve it. But we don't tell them why they need to solve it. Okay, and that's one thing. And on the other side, yes, we wanna achieve success, but we naturally are more afraid of losing than winning something. If I ask you, would you rather lose 100 euros or win 100 euros? You will be more inclined to saying, well, I, I, I don't wanna lose 100 euros. So I mind not winning, but I definitely don't wanna have to pay you 100 euros, right? And so we need to tell people what they stand to lose if they don't take action, yeah? So as a mentor, we show them, look, these are the products that are gonna allow you to overcome your problem. This is how you use them. This is step one, step two, step three. Do you want to use them? Okay, go for it. Buy now, book now, you know, schedule, purchase. That's our call to action. Because when you buy it now, you're going to avoid, and then you tell me how my problem is going to make my life better. What happens when I don't solve my problem? So that's a tragedy. But thanks to using your product, I'm going to avoid that. And therefore, I'm going to achieve the success. So you show me how life looks like remember i haven't been there you have so you're going to tell me how that looks like so that's how it's going to look like from the side of the customer and from the side of you as the mentor and maybe that goes a bit along with what you ask uh with the uh black side of storytelling their undercover side uh, that you were asking for so we need to tell people how their problem is going to be worse if they don't take action and how life is gonna be better if they actually take action thanks to our product, okay? So this is key. You have a customer who has a problem, meets a mentor, you, who gives them problems, who gives them products and services and shows them how to use them. 
So the best way when it comes to this, um, and I'm, I'm gonna give you actually the process now, let's, let's go a bit deeper into this. So you have a customer, you need to define what is it that they want. Um, obviously always, you know, everybody talks about this, define your customer, but you need to understand the problem. And I, and I told you before, so the, the problem in, 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 when we talk about the five elements of storytelling, the villain is creating the problem, right? So we need to understand who is the villain because that's the enemy. Remember, we're on the side of the mentor. Uh, we're the mentor, we're on the side of the, of the hero. We have an enemy. The enemy is the villain, the cause of the problem, okay? So we need to identify that, whether it is time, whether it is procrastination, whether it is bureaucracy, whether it is a system, whatever it is, yeah? It could be somebody, it could be another company, whatever it is, yeah? So you need to identify the villain so that you together with the customer, you are the team that is gonna tackle that. And then we have a problem. But the problem I mentioned before that is split into external and internal, but it turns out that when we look deeper into it, there is a third expression of the problem, and that is the philosophical side. On the external side, let's say, for example, how, how does that look like? The external is the, the superficial problem that I need to solve. Let's say I got a new job and, and I need a car to get there because I live outside the city and there's no public transportation. So, so my problem is I need a car to get to work. My internal problem is that uh, I believe in climate change. So I feel bad about getting a petrol gas engine car. So I need to get an electric car. So you see how automatically my internal problem defines what kind of products I'm gonna look for. So we need to understand what is that internal aspiration of our customer because that narrows what they're gonna be looking for in the market. And so I need a car, external problem, easy to solve. Internal problem is that it has to be electric because I believe in climate change. But then there's something beyond that. And it is that, you know what? I'm an innovator, I'm an entrepreneur. And I like challenging the status quo. I want to be with a company that is pioneering. And so I look into the market and I'm going to connect, obviously, with that company that is a pioneer, the first one to, that is driving things because I am an entrepreneur. Yeah? And so automatically an electric car from Toyota makes no sense. An electric car from Nissan makes no sense. An electric car from Volkswagen makes no sense because they're not the first ones. Who's the pioneer leading the clan? Tesla. So automatically by default, yeah, when I look into my own problems, the external, internal, philosophical, and when I'm shopping around, I am going to connect with a company like Tesla that produces cars that are electric, that challenges the status quo. The problem is that the, your client has no clue that they have all these problems. They just don't know maybe the external for sure because they know they need a car. Uh, maybe they have this idea of the internal, but they don't, for sure, they're not aware of the philosophical problem and so we'll know why, okay? And don't be stressed because companies as well don't know what is the philosophical problem that they solve. So this goes on both sides. So meet a mentor. The mentor is gonna connect with them empathetically by showing them, hey, I had the problem and authority by showing them this is how I solve it. This is my success that I achieve when I solve that problem. That's why I created this product uh, that is going to help you solve the problem for yourself so that you don't need to go through all the struggle that I had to go through, right? And so you give them a plan, you give them a process. So steps one, two, and three, and it could be step one could be something before using your product. So first thing is you need to understand what your problem is. Then you buy our product and then you solve your problem or you implement your problem. So there are many ways that you can deliver a process. You can do it like step one, like so the steps leading to, your, to buying your product, the step before preparation to buy your product, buying your product and then implementing your product or it could be buying your product first and then what happens after. So it's up to you and what resonates best uh, with the process of your, of your customer, but you know, no more than three steps. And then agreement has to do with how do you work? You know, we are 
sustainable company. We believe in you know, using uh, sustainable products, uh, um, giving a chance to people that have been in prison or whatever it is, yeah? like what is the, the way that you work. From there, you call them to action. You give them a directional call to action, which means by now, if they don't buy, then they go into a transitional call to action, which is download my PDF guide, you know, or why not sign up to your newsletter or sign up for a demo or sign up for a webinar or whatever it is. Yeah? So you have those two. And then you show them how you help them avoid tragedy and finally how you can achieve success. So that's the process that the customer goes through from their perspective and how do you come in into their story and then what actually is happening at every step. Okay, this is key. Um, this is key because the whole point is that you need to understand the journey of your customer so that you can introduce yourself into their own journey, right? So you need to come in into their journey as and become the mentor so that you can guide them through that unknown world. So you need to, that's why you give them a process. You show them, you eliminate risk for them. You show them how they're going to solve their problem with your product, how life is going to look at the end when they finally get rid of that, uh, that villain that is holding them back and how life is going to be better. Right? Now, as I, as I start coming to the end, um, there's one key thing. And I mentioned that when it comes to positioning yourself as the mentor. Now, maybe you know about this, maybe you don't, um, but there is this thing called the golden circles. And this is developed by Simon Sinek. What Simon Sinek did, and he wrote a book called Start With Why, so he analyzed how companies, organizations, and people inspire action. How are they able to build communities and lead uh, tribes into taking action, making an impact, right? So he found out that actually the way that those that are inspire others, the way they communicate is very different than the rest. And so he codified and put it together and he called it the golden circles. And it, and it goes something like this. Every company knows what they do, knows how they do it differently, but very, very few understand why they do what they do. And it is those companies that understand why they do what they do that are able to inspire others to take action. It is those that communicate from the inside out that are able to attract people to do business with them. While most companies say what they do and how they do it, so communicate from outside to the inside, it is those that lead, that, is, that communicate from the inside to the outside. They say their why, their how, and their what. And he uses the case of Apple. Because, well, it's easy, people understand, right? And so how is it possible that a computer company is able to sell you a watch, a phone, a live streaming service, a, a I don't know, a laptop, whatever, while other companies that have the skills are not able to. It would be very strange to have a, a watch from IBM. It would be very weird to have a phone from Xerox. Now, these companies can do that, and they have tried many times, but they can't, they can't manage to break through. And so on the one side, it's because, well, they communicate from the outside in. They position themselves as a computer company or as a, as a, a printer company. The, what Apple does is that instead of positioning themselves as an electronics company or, or as a printing company or as a phone company or as a watch company, they say what they believe in. We believe in challenging the status quo. Everything we do, we do beautifully designed and easy to use. We just happen to make great computers. We just happen to make great watches. So instead of telling me we make great watches that are beautifully designed and easy to use because we believe in challenging the status quo, they reverse the conversation. And because they start with the why, now we understand that whatever product they put out there is because they want to challenge the status quo. And therefore, everything that they will develop, it is aligned with that. Yeah, it is aligned with that ultimate purpose. And that's why they are in the phone category. That's why they're in the watch category. That's why they are in the phone category. 
Now they didn't start like this, right? They started first by positioning themselves as a computer company. And then as once people understood what they did, they managed to branch out from that. They managed to then move on. They have been communicating their why since 1984 when they launched that famous IBM, like against IBM commercial. They identified that IBM was the villain, that everybody was just using the same machines and that they wanted to challenge the status quo. And already from 1984 is that they have been building that. So great one, yeah, that's, that works awesome for Apple, a trillion dollar company, uh, but how do I do it in my startup? Well, you start by positioning yourself right? Communicating what you do so that people understand how it is, um, how you can help them. And I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. But the biggest thing is that in today's world, people want to work with companies that believe what they believe. We want to do business with companies that, that are aligned with what we're trying to achieve. Because more and more people are understanding what is their philosophy and what are the things that, that they're looking for? And so when they're shopping around, they want to connect with products that they identify with. Not because of them, not because of the company, right? Not because how great Apple is, but it's simply because that product, because, because Apple is aligned with what I believe. When I use a product from Apple, it expresses who I am. And so it, it shows that because that company wants to challenge us to school, if I am an entrepreneur, the best product for me to buy is a product from Apple because they want to challenge us out of school and therefore I would use their product to achieve my goal, which is challenge us out of school and disrupt my industry. And so we are aligned. We are partners in that mission. So I connect with your why, but it's because your why is connecting with my why. And Kim, coming to your question, this is regardless of B2C or B2B. Actually, I would even say even more in B2B because we wanna do business with companies that believe what we believe and you're doing business with people. And so those people, they wanna associate themselves and partner with organizations that are actually are gonna be aligned with what they believe. So not because of you, but it's because you allow them to achieve their ultimate purpose. So. In B2C, obviously, yeah, it's relevant. We said in the case of Apple, but in business to business communication, this thing of, the, of decisions taken logically and, and, and based on cost and price, you know, we live in a world where we buy what we want, not what we need. And so the whole, the whole way that we sell what, what people want it's simply in the story. So you gotta use a story and, and, and to showcase what you believe in and, and what it is that you want to achieve. And so when you're able to connect with that other person, you build trust, people see that you are like me, we have the same ideals. And so you're the most logical person to work with. It may cost a bit more, but it gives me peace of mind because I trust you because you are like me. So we can't be afraid of annihilating people because we actually need to annihilate the 97.5% of the market because we need to target those innovators. So don't be afraid of, uh, you know, annihilating potential customers. You can't try, to, the more you try to appeal to everybody, the least attractive you're going to be because you're diluting your message. You're going to be boring. You're trying to attract the early majority. But remember, the early majority will not buy if the early adopters don't buy and the early adopters will not buy if the innovators don't buy. And in order for the innovators to buy, they need to be remarkable with a remarkable story because they will want to buy, buy something they want, not something they need, something they connect with. So your product is just simply a tool your client uses to achieve their goals. Simple as that. Now there's another thing when it comes to the golden circles and it is because when you look at the client's problem, the external, internal and philosophical, and you look into your why, how, what, they align beautifully because your what is your external problem. You know, we create, we make computers, we make cars. That's, you need a computer, you need a car. Now you don't need any computer, you don't need any car. Well, we make cars that are electric, great for the environment. We make computers that are beautifully designed, that are easy to use, that look great, that are reliable. 
because we believe in challenging the status quo. So when you define the golden circles for, for yourself and your business and you communicate that way, when you position yourself from the inside out, what you're actually doing in your message is solving the true problems for your customer. Just figure out who your customer is, who has those three problems, where do they hang out? And then just repeat your message over and over and over and over. That's for the golden circles. Great. Um, yeah, so actually, <laughs> now that I see a bit of the time, I, I get carry out. I mean, there's no wonder I have food comes on this. Um, but yes, understand your role. Your role defines you. You are the, the mentor, not the hero. Okay. Once you start telling the story from the mentor side and understand everything that is happening on the hero side, your communication is going to start resonating. It's going to start connecting. It's going to start building trust. It's going to attract you're gonna start connecting with the hero, okay? Because when you try to position yourself as a hero, you're gonna push them away. When you're a mentor, you attract them. So look into your communication. How are you communicating to your customers right now? Are you talking about your achievements? Are you thinking about we, we, we? Or are you talking about how you can help them, how you understand the struggle? Try to eliminate all that stuff that describes you. But position yourself how you know the, product, the problem exists. And that's how your story positions you. And the easiest way is, well, things that storytelling, actually, um, it's, it's pretty much everything that has to do with your business. You're gonna look into your market. They're gonna be saturated. Uh, we, everybody's bombarded with, the, with products. And so your story is gonna allow you to position yourself because your story pretty much is everything that has to do with your business. When you look at it from the macro perspective, when you look at it from the strategy side, you know, when you look at this business, there is a story there. You know, we're walking down the street, it's fast food. I, this communicates that it's not gonna be expensive, it's gonna be fast. Maybe I'm scared that I might get sick from eating here. Um, maybe it was a night out. So this, there is a story here and and it's gonna be very different and it's gonna attract very different people than those looking to eat in a place like this. Yeah? And so what happens many times is that we wanna communicate a story with our business that sounds like this, but we're using something like that. And that's part of the challenge that we have as a business. And, and when we communicate a story, we may want to communicate this and we want to attract this type of client, but we are selling it like something like that. Or actually, we want to go to those innovators and then go something like this. Yeah. So this tells a story, you know, it's a retro place, it's in the 50s, you see, already start selling us different characters, setting, place. And so just by looking at this, but actually the whole story is delivered already from before your customers comes in touch with you, all the way to the way the service is delivered all the way until the end once you have fascinated the customer. So your macro story allows you, actually it's, it's everything that has to do with your business, your macro story, okay? So it's not, that I need a story to connect and, and, and get somebody's attention is I need a story to position my business. What's the story that I want to communicate? Yeah? And the way you do that is by understanding your product, understanding your service, understanding your customer, understanding your market, you identify what is the gap that is in the market and then how do I position myself? So you develop your story to fit to that target, um, that target market. Most of the time when you see that the problem exists, um, you're going to see that you have a problem um, because you experience the problem yourself. You're going to look into the market. You're going to identify the gap. And so you try to go that way. But that, that's on the macro side. So your story positions you. Each of these businesses has a story. And so the macro side, you need to understand, are you communicating this story? Is this a story actually that you want to be communicating? Is it the type of customers that you want to be communicating to or not? So your story positions you. And finally, you need to understand the difference between strategy and tactics, okay? So, so far we have looked into the macro side of, of storytelling. 
right? We look into the macro, like even from your website to your emails, to your branding, to what, what is that you want to convey? All that is part of your story. That all that is gonna communicate to your customers, like every single point of your customer journey, right? And so how about the tactics? Let's say, for example, we look into these products and we see that they're organic and they're, maybe the packaging is different. And then we see all these seals, all that is part of the story. But we could maybe use as a tactic that instead of placing these chips with the other chips where they would just blend in because there's one more, how about if we position these chips next to the corn aisle, the corn stand in the vegetable aisle at the supermarket. Now it's a bit different. What if we place this next to the natural products? Okay, so that's, we look into the story and then we look into our tactic and okay, that's gonna be what we're gonna do in order to support our ultimate strategy. Yeah? And that's what I want to communicate is that understanding what is the ultimate strategy you know what is our golden circle um what is the gap in the market that we're trying to go to and then what are the daily daily touch points that we're using storytelling to connect with right um do we position where do we place our product how do we play with price um what do i say on a post on linkedin what do i say on a demo what do i say so you're gonna use storytelling in a different area, but you need to see, you need to know that they're just like they're different types of customers. You're also going to have different stories that are going to fit the daily operations and the macro side. So in other words, you have the macro story and you have the micro story and the micro story has to do with everything that you say on a daily basis uh, on your touch points. And the macro is the whole thing that, that your customers are going to tell other people. Yeah, so when they come and share with others, like, ah, there's these new chips, I love them, they're healthy, they're natural, they're even in the vegetable side, yeah? So, because in today's world, your customers are the ones that get to tell your story, yeah? They experience with you, they connect, and now they get to tell other people. So the macro side is what is gonna tell them, and the micro side is what is gonna allow you to engage, to drive traffic, to, to reinforce that macro story, okay? So it's important to really define that those values. I mean, the macro strategy strategy is defined by your vision, and then your values, and then comes your strategy, and that's where you define um, the main voice of the of the story for the business. And that, by the way, that also is the same for your personal brand. Um, you know, what is the vision? Where it is that you want to go? How do people persuade, like perceive you? So you need to be self-aware. How are people perceiving you? What is the gap in the market? How you can position yourself out there? Yeah. Cool. Uh, also, so not only your own personal stories that you can use, uh, how do you find a gap or how do you want to go, but uh, give you three questions that you can use. Uh, in order to source other stories, because the stories don't necessarily need to come from your own experience or something that you believe in, but especially in the micro side, when you're talking about the tactics and daily, like uh, daily, um, daily, yeah, daily tactics that you use in order to tell your story. Well, you can look into customers, you can look into partners, you can look into employees, and you ask these three questions. What was the problem they had before you came along? How did they solve the problem thanks to your product? And then how does life look ever after? Problem, solution, impact, okay? So constantly ask these three questions in everything that you do. Look internally, what was the problem you had? How do you solve it? How life look after you solve it? Customers, what was the problem you had? How do you solve that problem thanks to your product? How does life look? look like now partners, suppliers, investors, and everybody around you. It's a great way to source and create stories that are around you that then you can share with your customers and your community. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, with that, we pretty much get to the end. Uh, just wanna let you know, I am offering on the 23rd of June, a business storytelling bootcamp 
is uh, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., where we're actually going to go into detail into that philosophical problem, into that internal problem. How do we define? How do we communicate it? We're going to look into your own story. And actually, what kind of stories do you need to be telling? Because it's not that you just tell random stories. We obviously want our stories to convert. So we need to create interest and connect and, and persuade. So it's not that also not just any story that you can tell out there um, you can share. So that's when we're gonna go obviously deeper into storytelling, um, into all those you know more defined actions and stories that you need to be telling. I really hope that today gives you an overview and the foundation of everything. Um, by the way, if you are interested in this, I know I, I don't have a link uh, and it's not on my website yet, um, but you can definitely just put in the chat your email just to make sure and then I can send you the link once, um, once I put it out there this week. So. Just keep that in mind. I just wanted to give that as a preview, especially since um, this today was a private workshop to my list. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how storytelling goes. I want, I hope I gave you the overview and the foundation. I hope that you're not like, I told you it was uh, gonna be a bit advanced, but, um, but I, 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 I think we managed to walk through and um, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I send you the link to this talk and you have access to, to the recording. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions right now, just feel free to then send it over um, in the chat so I can go through it. I see that there's a question in the Q&A. Let's see. Uh, in this capitalist world, when every company decision is highly analyzed through numbers and not through emotions, how will you make the why successful? Um, when you, so the, the why is going to be that the cherry on the top that subconsciously pushes the person to choose you. Yeah, you know? and when you communicate the why, I, I I think so. The way I address this is through upselling the client. And so what I do is, and, and this is one of the things that I, I see many businesses struggle with because we start uh, with one product and then we position ourselves and everybody understands what it is that we do. But as we grow, we understand that there are more problems, right? And so when, when I see that highly analyzed numbers, I guess you're talking about maybe pricing and it's a pricing thing. But it actually, uh, well, obviously, you know, not everybody has the money. Not everybody can afford you. But with, when, when, how do I phrase this? So you create a value ladder. And in the end, when people connect with you and you have their trust and understand what it is that you're trying to achieve, then price becomes a second option because you have built a relationship that positions you in a place where the client doesn't have another choice. You're just simply the only choice because you're the right one. I, I, I don't wanna talk to anybody else because it's too risky. And so what I see is that companies struggle is that you see that you have many problems that you can solve because you have grown and you start promoting all these different things and you start diluting your message. And so the best way to go at it is, look, I can tell you what I, that I believe that communication skills have the power to define if you achieve success or not. Because I, I've seen how communication can transform you and at the end, everything comes down to a conversation. So I believe that. And then I can say, well, how about a coaching of 2000 euros for 10 hours? Mm, yeah, I connect, but uh, yeah, that's too expensive, right? But if I say, I believe this, 
you believe that, hey, why don't you take part in this webinar? Why don't you download my guide? Yeah. And then little by little, we start getting to know each other and we're building up that connection. Today, people don't trust each other. Yeah, the internet and everything. And I think at the same time, thanks to the pandemic, you know, we have a very, very strong trust instrument. You guys can see into my home. You have a person that look into who I am. Yeah? And, and we, and that goes vice versa. So it, it allows you to connect and have a, a look into who are, who are the people out there. So I think that the question is not if, if how to make sure if the why is successful and the emotions. I think it's, it's balancing out the sales process and the strategy behind it. Like, I also have a workshop on how to find your why. Do I communicate that? No, because I start deluding myself, but I communicate first, okay, elevator pitch and then storytelling. And then little by little, as you get to know me and, and I start opening that door and, and show you a bit more what is the world behind it, then eventually it becomes to the point where, you know, if you wanna have a communications workshop, one is the person. Okay? And so it's the same way with your customers. You need to be patient and really nurture that where you develop your strategy as you're building up value where they have the money, you know? And also maybe they don't have it now, but as, as you solve one problem, you allow them to make the money to get to the next stage. And then at that stage, you have something else and you continue to get them to the next level and so on and so on. So um, that's how I would make sure that I get to achieve my why what I do is that then I create different, different places on how I can solve my why. Yeah, I achieve my why. I, if, if, if I believe that communication skills uh, can help you, you know, will define if you achieve success or not. And therefore I create products that are hands-on, practical and simple to use. And that's why I just happen to make great workshops or great webinars. You know, I go at it like that. So, I then I, I, I build that connection and, and, I, and I achieve my why at every step, whether it is a guide or it is my coaching. So I hope that, uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, so yeah, I mean, storytelling, as you can see, then it's extremely strategic. Uh, it's, it's very much aligned with your whole funnel process and what it is that you wanna do. And that's why I mean, you can talk about it and I work, most of the time just on coaching one-on-one -on -one and working with a client and really helping them on that process. So, so I see that it's very much clear. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm gonna, if you have, you know, any other sources, I mean, people always ask me for books that you can check. Um, definitely recommend you checking Donald Miller's book, I, which is the one I show you with the process. Um, there he gives you more info on, on the problem, externally, internal, philosophical. Um, you got Purple Cow from Seth Godin. I mean, this great book. Uh, Start with Why from Simon Sinek. Pitch anything. It's an amazing book. Definitely recommend you. I should have a, an affiliate link on my, on my website because I really, this book is really good. Um, it helps you simplify your message and how to communicate it to to people and also how to deal with that, um, the social positioning of yourself and framing yourself when you're having a discussion. So uh, not a discussion, but like a conversation on, on pitching your products. Yeah? So pitch anything from Modern Cloud. Cool. So guys, please, please, above anything, if there is one thing that you take out from today, be the mentor, not the hero. May the force be with you. Thank you very much for joining me. And of course, more than invited to download the guide by simply going on that link. Also, you'll find it on the skillsoflife.net slash blog. There'll be a link there. Or actually, if you go to skillsoflife.net, you'll I'll be able to download it there directly if you're interested on how to simplify your message using storytelling so that you can eliminate confusion and stop confusing your customers. So that's it for my side. Thank you very much, people. Thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. And it's been great to have you. Thank you for your questions. And as I said, if you are interested in getting to know more about the bootcamp, just put your email there so I know that I can add you once I share it um, um, with people that are interested, okay? So all the best. Thank you for joining me and 
see you, I guess, on another webinar workshop. <laughs> Thank you, guys.